mother It doesn't matter what your color calls The devil's a liar, still a killer and destroyer But Jesus Christ is a realer Top of the morning to you, Footscray. Great to have you out with us this morning. You may be close by next door in Yarraville. You may be at the top end in Townsville. Maybe you're even up in Nashville and Tennessee. We're so glad you could join us this morning. We're going to begin as we normally do, looking forward to the Word of God. Amen. Well, let's begin this morning with praise and worship. Stand to your feet this morning. Lift your voices. Hallelujah. We want to come before God with joyfulness. Amen. With rejoicing in His name. Let's sing it out. Give God the glory. Give God the glory, give God the glory, oh give God the glory, and He will give you, and He will give you, and He will give you the victory. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Oh, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. So let us give God. So let us give God. So let us give God. All of Satan, the blood. Sing it once more. Oh, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Yes, the blood of Jesus. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Oh, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. So let us give God. So let us give God. So let us give God. All of the praise. Sing out, mighty is our God. Mighty is our God, and mighty is our King. Mighty is our Lord, Creator of everything. Sing mighty. Mighty is our God, oh yes, mighty is our King. Mighty is our Lord, Creator of everything. His name is higher, higher than any other name. His power is greater, He created His name tonight, this morning. His name is higher, higher than any other name. Oh, His power is greater, He created every mighty is our God. Sing it again this morning. Mighty is our God, oh yes, mighty is our King. Mighty is our Lord, creator of everything. Is our God, yes, mighty is our King, mighty is our Lord, creator of every. Let's thank Him this morning in this place. Oh, bless Your wonderful name, my God. We thank and we praise You. You are the Creator of all things. Hallelujah. Thank You, Jesus, the One who shed His blood on Calvary's cross. Amen. Sing it out this morning. What can wash away my sin? Yes, what can wash away my sin? Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Yes, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. This morning for my part in this I see and for my part in this I see 
Yes, nothing but the blood of Jesus And for my cleansing, this my plea Yes, nothing but the blood of Jesus And oh, precious is the flow That makes me white as snow Yes, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin at all. Sing it out this morning, amen. And nothing can for sin at all. Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And Lord of good that I have done. Yes, nothing but the blood of Jesus. says we can sing a new song to the Lord. We're going to do that this morning. Join us. Hallelujah. Even though we slow things down, we want to lift up His name. Amen. He is the one who is here. Hallelujah. Let's sing it out this morning. You are here. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Jesus, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Sing it again, Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Jesus, that is who you are. You are Him, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you. As we sing Jesus, amen. Jesus, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yes, indeed. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, Jesus, that is who, yes, that is who you are, 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 that is who, you are. That is who. even when I don't sing and see out the speed morning. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop, Jesus. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. And way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Jesus, that is who you sing it, 
Jesus said again, amen. Jesus, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yes, you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Jesus, that is who you are. Yes, that is. My God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Head of our master, of our sheen, of our king. Oh, thank you, my Father. Hallelujah. Amen. As we come before our God this morning, uh, the Sunday morning in the Potter's House Church in Footscray, before we begin our service and go to the preaching of the word, right now what we want to do is lift up some needs in prayer. Let's remember uh, these pastors, their families and churches, the Mitchells in Prescott, Arizona, the Howells in Burnside, the Rajabons in Sajapur, Bangalore in India. Uh, also, we have, do have a special request this morning. Uh, we want to pray for Giovanna Popolo, uh, Josie's sister-in-law. She's had to be taken to hospital with COVID-19, so she really needs a touch from God, church. We really need to lift her up in prayer this morning, believing God to move upon this dear woman. Hallelujah. Let's pray all these things. Let's also believe God for our live stream service this morning. And may God's hand be upon pastors. He preaches. Maybe you've got a need upon your heart this morning. Why don't you acknowledge that? Lift your hand with us this morning. Amen. As we believe for God to move. Why don't we lift our voices in this place this morning as we pray? Father, asking you, God, once again, Lord, you would move. We believe in you, my King, that your Holy Spirit, God, would touch lives. Your Holy Spirit would have right away, my Lord. And we believe in you, Father. Oh, God, your hand be upon these churches, my God. Lord, upon the Mitchells, Father, upon the Howells, Lord. Oh, God, upon the... Roger Bonds, my God, I also pray, Father, all your special, Father, healing, my God, upon Giovanna, my Lord, bring, uh, bring, bring healing, I pray, God, upon her life, Lord, even now, my King, you're able to move and to minister, Father, we thank you, my God, we believe you, Lord, for all that you would do, God, we thank you that you would anoint your word this day, and we come together in Jesus' name, in one accord, and we say, Amen, let's praise him this morning, hallelujah, thank you, my God, bless you, Lord Jesus, Praise you, my Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I mean, as you find your seats this morning, I do want to again, once you out, again, welcome you out to our Sunday morning service in the Potter's House. Just to let you know some things that are happening uh, through the, over the next few days. We do have a service tonight at 6 p.m. If it's your first time with us, be a part of that also. Jump onto our website once again, about quarter to six. That'll be 6 p.m. tonight. Very important part of our Sunday, the night service. As well as that, tomorrow we've got our Monday Parenting Support Group. Amen. Now your leaders will uh, be in touch with you with that. Uh, if you want to be a part of that, parents, amen, you can uh, speak to the leaders. Again, contact with them. They'll give you the details, all that needs to happen for tomorrow evening. Wednesday night, we have a service uh, here also, which is live streamed in the building at 7.30 p.m. Jump on our website once again. Looking forward to that great uh, part of our week to be able to come before God on a Wednesday night and hear His Word. Thursday evening, we have our Healthy Headspace Support Group uh, with Brothers Andrew Sutton, Brother Rob Graham. Amen. And looking forward to that. It's on Thursday for all the singles. And uh, Friday, our home Bible studies, they're going great. We've had an awesome time. And once again, uh, 7.30 this Friday, another installment of the Overcoming Life series. Be out for that. Great to see many people be a part of that, uh, not just from area-wide churches, but from different places uh, throughout Australia. So that's great. That's awesome. And also our Melbourne Conference, which we're looking forward to December the 7th to the 11th, the Great Awakening. Looking forward to that. I mean, those are all the announcements that we have this morning. Right now, we want to give God thanks and praise as we prepare to give. Let's do that this morning. Amen. Thank you, my God. Bless your wonderful name. Hallelujah. Praise you, my King. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. One man was just making a remark to his friend. He said, you know what? He said, I've got enough money to last me my whole life. But then he went on to say, that's if I die by next Tuesday. 
And you think about it today, you know, I was just, uh, just hearing uh, bits and pieces and following things and the news and so forth. You know, in Victoria, there's a lot of business that are, are finding it quite hard today, obviously with the lockdown restrictions and so forth. And, uh, you know, many people are saying, well, you know what, look to the government, look to Scott Morrison, he'll bail you out, he'll do job, keep a job, seek, all that kind of stuff. But you know what, as Christians, we can say, you know, we look to God. And uh, it's, it's great what the government are doing, that, that they can help out. But you know what? Beyond that, hallelujah, we need to look to God. Uh, amen. He's the one who sustains us. He's the one who gives us all that we have. And even through times of lock and even through times of restrictions, our God is able to move powerfully. You think about the woman with two mites. You think about uh, the widow at Zarephath. These ones put their trust and their hope in God. They had nothing else. Amen. And we can look to God. We can be encouraged this morning, folks, that as we look to God, as we give to God, hallelujah, as He asks us to give, like He has with ones in Scripture, that He will move and He will provide. Hallelujah. Let's uh, find, amen. Uh, let's find, uh, indeed, uh, grace in that. Hallelujah. And uh, fulfillment in that. I just want to uh, let you know this morning, if you have your device, take it out right now. Be your phone, your iPad, whatever that may be. Our details are going to come up on screen. Join us this morning as we give into God's kingdom. Maybe it's your first time with us this morning. I mean, believe in God to move. Hallelujah. Let's ask God to help us. I'm just going to pray this morning over the gift and the giver as we believe God. Amen. Father, I'm asking this morning, God, help us, I pray, God, to understand and to know, Lord, that we can look to you, Father. You will provide, my God, supernaturally, my King. Lord, we wouldn't look to the ways of this world, but we're trusting you, my King, for all things, my God. We thank you, Father, that you shall provide, that you do provide, my King. And we thank you for all that you've done, God. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you give this morning. Hallelujah. Sing that fire up, amen. Fire up, fire up, make it burn the gift of God that is in you. Fire up, fire up, make it burn, fan it into a flame. Fire up, fire up, fire up, make it burn the gift of God that is in you. Fire up, fire up, make it burn, fan it into a flame. No more time. No more time for sitting around, no procrastination, God has got a job for you, it's time to take the nation, fire up. Well, thank you, uh, Pastor and all the song service team, a big welcome to everyone. Uh, glad uh, there's so many people on this wonderful Sunday morning, a part of our service. If you're a part of our congregation, welcome to you. Uh, if you're a visitor or someone who's uh, logging on, uh, looking for some hope and direction, you're at the right place, so well done. Uh, just wanted to give a bit of a, a shout out to all our Sydney fellowship. It was great they were able to uh, have a conference last week and a real credit to them trying to navigate all the restrictions. They were allowed to have up to 100 people in certain spaces, so they divided up and they had certain hubs around, you know, Parramatta and then other hubs around. Uh, and in the end, to the glory of God, they preached the gospel and planted a couple of new churches. And so we're glad that the uh, St. Mary's Church, which is Pastor Theo and Trish, uh, they sent out young Kenny and CU uh, into the um, Marsden Park of Sydney. And then out of the Fairfield Church, uh, Brother Tony Huang, I believe it's his... His literal brother, uh, John and Jade Huang, going out uh, to Seven Hills in Sydney. And so what a great blessing. Two new churches, even in COVID restriction, lockdown, shutdown time, the gospel's preached. And also a new evangelist, Corey and Sharon Bourne, are going to be evangelizing out of Parramatta. And I think that's been a desire of our brother Corey's heart for a long time. So we're very pleased for Corey and Sharon. Amen. Let's open our Bibles then. So, so well done to the uh, uh, New South Wales Fellowship. We've got to believe God that we can at least have 100 plus uh, by December in Victoria. Praise God. Let's have a look at Ruth chapter 2 verse 10. Ruth 2 verse 10. One of the amazing landmarks uh, in the nation of United States is, well, a number of major, amazing landmarks are found in New York City. And uh, if you ever have the privilege going there, one of the places you'll want to go is take a ferry ride uh, out to the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty is on a little bit of an island there in New York Harbour. And it's, it's a, a very uh, worthwhile endeavour. You know, so that amazing statue was gifted to America from the people of France. 
and this was in 1886, an incredible um, accomplishment and uh, architecture. And so the lady with the lamp has overlooked uh, New York Harbour for, for well over uh, probably nearly 150 years. And on the, uh, there's a number of levels. You can actually pay to go up and see different levels. But uh, on, on part of the base, there's a big plaque uh, that uh, is a poem that was penned by Emma uh, Lazarus way back in 1883. And it said, uh, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuge of your teeming shores. Send these, the homeless, the tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp besides the golden door. And so this had been something that has been there for nearly 150 years, welcoming new immigrants into that great nation. You know, Australia, like America, has been founded, uh, I mean, on mass immigration, mainly from the old world of Europe, to the new world, uh, America, Australia, uh, New Zealand, Canada, and such forth. On the whole, it's been an amazing success story. However, that's not to say there's been a number of challenges along the road. So I want to have a look at the, this morning at a sermon I've entitled, The Foreigner. So everybody who's ever been a foreigner, amen, this is a special sermon for you. Amen. Being a stranger in a foreign land. Let's have a look at Ruth chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible says, So she fell on her face and bowed down to the ground and said to him, Why have I found favour in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you've left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and have come to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work and a full reward be given to you by the Lord God of Israel under whose wing you have come for refuge. Then she said, let me find favour in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. Now Boaz says to her at mealtime, Come here, eat of the bread, dip your piece of, piece of your bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers, and he passed parched grain to her, and she ate and was satisfied, and kept some back. And when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, let her glean even among the sheaves, and do not reproach her. Also let grain from the bundles fall purposely for her. Leave it that she may glean, and do not rebuke her. I want to have a look at a message I've entitled, The Foreigner. The Foreigner. First of all, we want to consider the first point. Uh, I am a foreigner. What does this imply then? In our text... Ruth uh, asked a very, very uh, telling question. She asked Boaz, why are you helpful, kind, and paying any attention to me considering I'm a foreigner? Considering I'm a foreigner. Alan, a Adam Clark, the commentator, says what she's saying is, I'm not a citizen of Bethlehem. I'm not even a part of the Commonwealth of Israel, but I'm from a strange people, a daughter of Moab, a people who are not fit and worthy to enter into the congregation of the Lord. The word foreigner, and in, I think in other versions it might even say stranger, means different. It means strange. It means a non-relative. It can even mean an adulterous person. So the implication is back in Ruth's day, foreigners were looked at uh, through uh, su su with suspicion and on the whole might have not been treated the best. They definitely weren't trusted, nor were they quickly embraced into a community 
or even into a family. So Ruth was not expecting any help or favour, and perhaps as she went to work that day, that first day, she was prepared for perhaps quite the opposite. I'm sure uh, there was some thought and talk uh, where she's talking with her mother-in-law about going to a new workplace alone. Perhaps they put it off for a time. Perhaps they thought uh, this is not a good situation for you uh, to go into this work environment. Uh, but finally the Bible says the mother-in-law allowed her to. Uh, and this might have been when they exhausted all other means of support. She literally had to. Uh, and you, I want you to ponder for a moment that in the days of Ruth and Naomi, there was no... Uh, Centrelink, government support, job keeper, job seeker, job stayer. There was none of that stuff. If you didn't work, you didn't eat. If you didn't eat, you most likely would die. So she was at a critical point here and uh, so she went out to work in a foreign field. I want to consider that she says, I being a foreigner. What does that mean? Even from our text, being a foreigner, what, how does that play out? Number one, many foreigners feel very alone. Many foreigners feel very alone. That's why a lot of times uh, foreigners will move to a new city or new area or nation and try to find others just like them and move into a, a suburb or neighbourhood where they have others that are from that back. That's why you have Greek suburbs or Italian suburbs or Vietnamese suburbs because people feel very alone and are trying to mitigate that loneliness they feel in a new nation. In our text, Ruth ventures out into this workplace trying to provide for herself and a mother-in-law and she's gleaning alone in a stranger's field. See, in Leviticus 19 verse 10, this is what the provision God made in those days. He said, he put it in the law and codified it, you shall not glean your vineyards, nor shall you gather every grape of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the stranger, I am the Lord thy God. So I want you to say God codified it that uh, if there was people that didn't have land, that didn't have any means uh, of uh, getting resources, uh, and especially they were the poor and the foreigners, God says uh, that I want there to be something they can literally work for the doll. Can you say, man, that's what it was. They had to work, and, but there was provision made for them. So number one, foreigners can feel very alone. Number two, they can feel vulnerable. Without their strong family and friend support base, foreigners can be vulnerable to evil people and predators. Look at our text in verse 8 of Ruth 2. Boaz says to Ruth, You will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not... Go to glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap, and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? I want you to begin to grasp these two verses of what Boaz is doing here. Why did he make this command? Why did he say to this foreigner, uh, to Ruth, make sure you stay close by my young women, the reapers, or those from Bethlehem that are gleaning. Make sure you stay close to them. He's trying to draw them in because when you're alone, uh, I mean, you can be very vulnerable. And then he actually commanded the young men, the, the major people that were working here uh, with him, do not touch as your boss, I'm telling you, do not touch this woman. Why did he have to do that? Because obviously, the, historically, they are abused. Foreigners get abused. Foreigners see, people see them as vulnerable and uh, they can abuse them. You know, I had the privilege of pastoring in New Zealand for five years and 
I had a lot to do with people that were overstayers, uh, people that were illegal in New Zealand. I hadn't really had that dimension so much in Australia, but it's just everywhere uh, in New Zealand. And I found them people coming into the church and, and they're trying to get their legal status. And I heard story after story of predators that were immigration sharks stealing every bit of money they ever had. Every piece of money. It was just uh, outrageous that these people would take advantage of people that are foreigners that are trying to get some legal status and they lie and cheat and deceive and say, look, just give me another 10,000 now and I'll push it through extra. And they just, they just abuse these people time after time after time because strangers and foreigners can be vulnerable. Not only that, strangers and um, foreigners many times are underemployed. If you think about Ruth here, when she goes to work, she works basically at the lowest level of the work totem pole. I'm sure back home, Ruth was probably a very capable, skilled uh, woman that had uh, perhaps uh, good influence uh, under her husband and in her family. But here she comes now to Bethlehem as a stranger uh, and she's working a job, I believe, that's probably well below her skill level. Because remember, it was only the poor and the foreigners. That's what you provide the provision of welfare for the gleaning. And how many of us hear stories of highly educated individuals that are working well below their skill set, uh, even in this great city of Melbourne? You talk to people that are, you know, your Uber taxi uh, uh, drivers, uh, uh, the takeaway pizza people, uh, and you find out they're, they're nuclear scientists, civil engineers. And in many ways, working well, well beneath their skill set, foreigners many times are being underemployed. That's another challenge, isn't it? Also, uh, I was thinking about that wonderful uh, story that Ernie Toppin says, and this can be true when you make a conversion moment experience. Ernie Toppin, who said when he was a professional singer in the world, he was driven around in uh, limousines and chauffeured around. But then when he pulled out of that and decided to live for God and sing only for Christ, he, he writes a song about delivering pizzas to rich people. And, he, and the mind couldn't help but think, what am I doing here? I used to be on the other side of the door having young poor people delivered to me and now that he's a foreigner, a man as, as a believer, he's struggling. Pastor Payne tells the story when he made a decision to become a disciple in Prescott Church. He did give up his university there. He ended up back at that same university collecting rubbish. He remembers picking up smoke butts around where, uh, where on the grounds of where he used to be there before. And so he was well underemployed. That can be a challenge. Being poor, the Bible says in in. Uh, um, Ruth 1 verse 21, I went out full and the Lord brought me back empty. Don't call me Naomi, but call me Mara. So she's saying we're empty, not only empty of her husband and her sons and men folk, which they were a great resource uh, there, but I would say she's uh, empty of finances. Many, many people are, are come and have stories of they've come with hardly anything. We know our beloved Nello, when he came uh, and got on that boat and was accepted into Australia, he, he said, uh, I, I hadn't eaten for days and days. And finally I came uh, just with a few cents in my pocket. Uh, and many people that are foreigners are usually very poor. Story after story of the Vietnamese boat people. 
had to sell all their worldly goods back in Vietnam to escape communism and to try to come down the dangerous waterways to Australia where many times their boats uh, were raided by pirates and everything was stolen. So many of them changed their uh, liquid assets into gold or precious gems. They would hide them from the pirates. Many of them would even sew them into parts of their body just to try to get them to their new country and the pirates then would start cutting them apart. It was horrible. And I hear story after story, these Vietnamese people were so poor when they come. Not only that, finally is misunderstood. Verse 13, she said, let me find favour in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I'm not like one of your maidservants. So Ruth acknowledges the truth. She's not like the other women of Bethlehem. How is she not like them? Maybe it's the way she dresses. Perhaps it's her language. I'm sure Ruth probably would have learnt some Hebrew language when she was in Moab with her husband and, uh, and mother-in-law, but I'm sure most likely she spoke Hebrew with an accent. She might have been shaking her head or doing some other kind of thing that only foreigners do. You know, and people can be cruel on that. Just recently, the First Lady of the United States, um, Mrs. Trump, Melania Trump, she gave a speech at their National um, Republican Convention and immediately wicked people like Bette Midler, uh, you know, she, she immediately tweeted out, oh God, she still can't speak English and just began to criticise Melania Trump. It actually happens that Melania Trump uh, can speak uh, uh, six languages. French, Serbian, German, Italian, English and Slovenian. And you smarty pants, bit Miller, just because you're jealous and you're a has-been. That's real petty jealousy, isn't it? But that's what people can find here. So the truth being told, being a foreigner can have many challenges. I want to have a look then quickly at not all bad, not all bad. You know, the Bible speaks about having common decency. Uh, in Exodus 22 verse 21, you shall not meet, mistreat a stranger that could also be foreigner, nor oppress him. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. So here's God giving a reality check. God's now telling the children of Israel, you come into the promised land and things start going well for you. I want to remind you, do not mistreat or oppress a foreigner because remember, you or your parents and grandparents were at one stage foreigners themselves. Strangers in a strange land. There's been quite a lot of news this last week and one of the big news articles is about this young lady who was trying to get back into Queensland to attend her father's funeral. She was from Queensland and she'd come down to Canberra uh, for whatever reason. Going to Canberra, as you know, the a a ACT has no coronavirus at all but she couldn't get back into Queensland. She had to do two weeks compulsory hotel quarantine and her father passed away and she couldn't go to the funeral even though she had applied diligently. Became a little bit of an issue. One of the commentators, a man named Alan Jones, spoke about this. He called out the Premier of Queensland, Anastasia Palaszczuk, and he spoke about that and, and, and called her out. And finally, uh, this young lady was granted permission with full body armour almost and a police guard to view, have a viewing but not see her mother or sister or anybody else. Anyway, Alan Jones says, brings out an interesting story. He says, Premier, remember your paternal grandparents were Polish. You told the story in the Second World War 
being Polish people, your grandfather was in Germany and working for a German family in an occupied place and the German family offered him some food and some cheese and some drink uh, in the barn and he, he wouldn't eat it. He thought it's a trick so that they could just kill him because this was common in those days. But finally, even after the farmer came in and, you know, trying to coach him to eat some food, he was so hungry, he decided, well, I might as well eat anyway because I'm going to die. And he found out it wasn't a trick. And Leo Palaszczuk began to speak about the belief of the decency or basic decency in most people. He ended up, he fled Europe and arrived in Australia and again was shown basic human decency coming to Australia. Jones went on to say, Premier, your lust for power has removed both your sense of basic humanity and decency towards others. So this is, he, he's, he's and, and this relates because this is what God's saying in Exodus 22:21. You shall not mistreat a foreigner or a stranger or oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You've got to remember where you came from. In our text, we see an amazing story. In uh, Ruth 2 verse 5, the Bible says, And Boaz said to his servants who in charge of the reaper, Whose young woman is this? And the servants who was in charge of the reaper answered said, this is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. It's very interesting here that the Bible says Boaz noticed this stranger. The Bi Boaz noticed. You know, one of the great grievances that people had in Europe uh, where, that lived around the German concentration camps is that it seemed like so many of the locals didn't even notice what was going on. After the war, they actually took German civilians and showed them the atrocities that was done under their very noses. And some of them, and there's some pictures of it, they're breaking down and weeping and stuff. But the world asked the question, why didn't you notice? Or did you just pur purposely turn your back? In our text, Boaz noticed this stranger. One of the great stories I love is of um, Brother Joshua Joseph. He told this story and it so impacted me. He says when he came to Australia all those years ago, he's trying to make himself a new life, he's a foreigner, and all those things that I said come into play. He's probably said he's been here about six months. He's just got saved, thankfully, and given his life to Christ at the church. But he said uh, he remembers he was on a train. He had no money. I don't believe he had an employment. He didn't feel like he wanted to contact his parents and ask for more money. He was desperate and he was praying. He says, God, can you help me? Can you help me? I'm so hungry. I'm... Can you provide for me? He said as his head's down on the train carriage with his hands out, somebody walks by and puts two hamburgers in his hand. One in each hand. And says, I believe you need this. And Joshua says by the time he, lo he looked at the hamburgers, looked up and he looked around and the person had vanished or gone. I said, Joshua, do you think it was an angel? He said, it could well be. Whether it was God's angel of protection or whether it was an angel of a person that noticed somebody else, that noticed somebody else. The powerful story um, uh, entitled The Boy on the Wooden Box describes Oscar Schindler noticing a young boy that would have been sent to the concentration camps, a Jewish boy, and he was too small to reach the levers of the machines, so he found him a box. And he said, the box saved my life. I wonder, do you notice other people? 
Do you notice, and for Oscar Schindler, a German, to notice a poor Jewish boy? See, our church here in Footscray is full of people from many nations and many nationalities, and I believe this is a strategic plan of God, but no doubt there are many, many more all around us today that are wondering the question, does anybody notice me? Does anybody care for me? See, the Bible says in our text, Boaz noticed Ruth. Whose young woman is this? I want to look finally then under his wings, under his wings. See, God is the father of all mankind. As I shared the story before, when I preached in Perth at that first Easter march that we organised and I come to the end and Perth was used to be very much a, a monoculture of mainly just white Europeans, but it started to change over the last 20 plus years. And I, I remember preaching in the uh, mall there in central Perth and I really felt inspired to say these words, Jesus Christ died for you, no matter what your nationality, your language or your background. He died for you and rose again that you could be forgiven. You know, when I said that, that Christ was for all nations, it was like the Holy Spirit fell on the street. People were touched. Hands then were lifting up for people to be converted. It was a supernatural experience. It was very unusual. And out of that grew our outreach, Christ for the Nation outreach, out of that thought. But it was a very unusual grace. It told me that maybe we reached in and tapped into something of God's heart. See, Paul in Athens on Mars Hill said in Acts 17 verse 23, and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth. How many know one blood every nation? A powerful speech that he did in the capital of Greece in all those days, a landmark speech saying all men are created in the image of God and have equal value. There's a victory song in heaven in Revelation 5 verse 9. You are worthy to take the scroll to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us unto God by your blood. Listen, out of every tribe, tongue and people and nation. That's a victory song is that Christ is for all nations. And as we bring it to a close, the Bible says that Naomi and Ruth were away in Moab, came back after leaving. They'd left Bethlehem in Ruth 1.1. Then they decided to come back in Ruth 1.19. And Bethlehem was excited about them. And then Boaz calls it right as Ruth goes out to glean and to try to make some money in the future. In verse 12 of our text, Boaz says, The Lord repay your work and a full reward be given to you by the Lord God of Israel, listen, under whose wing you have come for refuge. When you came or when you came back to Bethlehem, to the place of God, you came under God's wing. You came under his refuge. Christian, when you came to Christ or when you came back to church, there was no better move, no better decision to make it your life's aim and purpose. I must come back and come under the wing or the wings of God's refuge. That's not just true for Ruth and Naomi. That's true for every person that is listening to me today. You know, they might have said, well, you know, we left because of the famine and the lack. Things weren't going so well in Bethlehem. We saw things were better in Moab in the world. But the truth is, as time goes on, there's nothing good outside the will of God for your life. And they began to realise that and they began to realise God had visited his people. 
God had given them bread and favour. And as you know, they came back and found refuge in God. Years later, in closing, Ruth's great-grandson, King David, would later write these words. Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Amen for that. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wing you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid by the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste in noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand by your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall be for you, nor any plague come near your dwelling, for he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Hallelujah. Whether it was an angel that ministered to Joshua, I don't know, but it was an angel of a person. One of the stories that I love from my time in West Auckland was the story of the Harris family. The Harris family were originally from Nauru, a small island, but like many islanders, they'd come to New Zealand to find a, a better life, a future. They had become overstayers like so many people and hadn't got their status legal. In the process of time, there was a crackdown and Benita just had gone to renew her driver's licence. The police uh, grabbed her, seized her, imprisoned her in the woman's prison and then had set immigration against her. And their statement from immigration in New Zealand, we want to clean you out of this nation. They're kind of like treating these foreigners like vermin. Anyway, in the process of time, what they didn't realise is Benita had come to our church. Benita and her daughter Satina and Love Alone had gotten saved and her mother Malay, they had gotten saved as a part of our church. I wrote a letter to the uh, Minister of Immigration of New Zealand because they were going to remove them and all their family. Here's a little bit of what I wrote. This was in 2006, 17th of May, to whom it may concern. I'm writing to confirm that Benita Harris and her family have been attending the Potter's House Christian Church and have been doing so for the last three years. Benita's family include her two daughters, Satina and Love Alone, a mother, Malay, a sister, Esther. Benita's whole family have been a very important part of our church community. They have been actively serving other members of the church and have freely given their time and energy to help bear a caring and benevolent church in West Auckland. Benita is honest, helpful and a very pleasant nature. Her daughters, Satina and Love Alone, are two very special young people who are a credit to her nurturing. As senior pastor and New Zealand supervisor of the Christian Fellowship Ministries, I give my firm support to... Uh, behind Benita and her family, desire to become residents of New Zealand. I believe they will be a continued asset to our church community and also to this nation. On a personal level, my family and I would greatly miss Benita and her family's friendship and love if they were forced to leave. I ask for special consideration be made on their behalf. My church and I are hoping and praying for a favourable outcome for this precious family situation. If I could be of any further assistance. And I sign my name to that letter. What immigration found so amazing is what they thought that so many islanders come and just stay in a little island enclave. But these folks had come into a church that was multiracial. They had been born again and not just become cultural, religious. 
They had given their life to service and I believe they came under a wing of refuge and protection. They were surprised. I'd heard back later. They were so surprised about this. And the good news is, as I shared the story before, half an hour before the removal order was to be enacted, we got a special letter from the Minister of Immigration of New Zealand saying that them and their whole family could stay. So Tina went on and married a man who went into pastoral ministry and their family is still, I believe, uh, their mum and others are still serving God to this day. So I want to say to you, this is powerful. When I talked about the foreigner, the Bible says in James 1.27, Pure and undefiled religion from God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in trouble and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. Listen, in this church and in this ministry, foreigners are welcome. And here we see a story of Ruth is overwhelmed that a godly man named Boaz, how come you're kind? How come you've noticed me? Because I'm a foreigner. Can I say to every church member here, some of you have been foreigners and now you're dinky die Aussies. Don't get too Aussie because then you start forgetting about where you came from. Don't do the premier of Queensland thing and forget. Let's continue to remember those that are strangers and foreign. There is such a harvest in Melbourne of people that have come from all over the earth and are looking for somebody to notice, for somebody to care and to someone to reach out with the gospel and the love of Christ. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heads bowed and eyes are closed. I want to give an opportunity this morning, first of all, Maybe you're a stranger and a foreigner to Christianity and to Christ. The Bible talks about the commonwealth of believers, that actually it's a powerful thing, being in faith, being in the family of God. Amen. There's a hand of love and the love of Christ reaching out to you this morning. The best thing that Ruth and Naomi could have done was to come back to Bethlehem to where the house of God was, where the people of faith were. Can I say to you, if you're a backslider, come back today. Come back to faith in Christ. Well, you say, well, I had problems before. Well, so did, so did um, Naomi. But listen, can I say, she realised that's what I need to do. And God became a refuge for the picture was like the wings of, of a perhaps like an eagle that sheltered from 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 the elements from predators from all the things out there amen that would seek to undermine your future and it was to provide some nurturing that you could grow and develop and be all that God wants you to be Say, Pastor, I'm not saved or I'm a backslider. I want to come back. Would you pray with me? Would you pray from your heart? And, and do this right now. Bow your head where you are. Say, Father in heaven, I turn from my sins. I believe in Jesus Christ that he died for me and rose again. I'm a backslider. And I want to come back. I commit my life to you. Be my Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. What a wonderful decision. I believe this is a, a step so powerful in the right way. God's going to help you. My story of Joshua, he prayed just a few months earlier. and There were still a few struggles, but the, it's almost like the angels of God began to take charge and begin to help in God's presence with him. God can do that for you. Hallelujah. I want to have an altar call. Perhaps there are some newer members that you totally relate to this story of being a foreigner in a strange land. Hallelujah. 
whether it's language, whether it's culture, whether it's difference, whether it's loneliness, whether, whether it's vulnerable, all of these things. And you say, Pastor, it's, it's, it's so much described my life. Underemployed, misunderstood. The Bible has answers. Faith has some answers. God's provided us the family as the church to help and nurture and cause you to be strong and grow. I want to challenge some other saints. Let's not be like the Queensland Premier who forget, forgot where we came from. And, and, and let's not, amen, forget to notice others, the other stranger, the foreigner. There's such a harvest in Melbourne as we begin to open up more to allow people in church. I believe we're going to see people from all different nationalities and backgrounds are fresh in this church. Keep your eye open for them. Give them a flyer or a text or say hello to them. Do something practical for them. Somebody did something practical for Josh. That's the heart of God. It's the heartbeat of God there. Amen. Let's sing out a worship song. Amen. We're going to have an altar. Maybe God's speaking to you, challenging your heart. Amen. Amen. I've, I've just got so comfortable in my own situation. I've forgotten about other people. God, I repent of that. God, help me. Amen. Let's sing that song out. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Savior, isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Well, praise God. What a wonderful song. Amen. We just want to uh, let you know we love you. We care about you. It's great to see so many people a part of our service. Uh, you know, I apologise for if you get a, feel a little bit of lockdown fatigue. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, 
uh, things will improve uh, more and more. We're praying for our regions that they can uh, out, be out of out more today. I think some announcements for them. So all our regional people looking forward to good things. Anyway, be encouraged tonight. We have a great service. Uh, uh, looking forward to what God's wanting to do. I believe it's entitled pr- uh, Pressing Through or Pushing Through. And it's the wonderful story, I believe, of reaching out and touching the hem of Christ's garment. We can all do with some of that tonight. Hallelujah. So be out for that 6 o'clock uh, service. We have some special music as well. Tremendous time of ministry. Amen. Thank you so much from the Footscray uh, Potter's House. Look forward to seeing you tonight. Amen. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. This ain't no Dungeons and Dragons. This is reality, what I speak. Check it out, listen, yo. So watch us flick the mighty word like a diaper. Strike with the triple pike, scythe, the devil's a liar. Thought I might add that straight away, cause he's a decay. That so heavily is gonna pay for leading astray every single individual. I'm the face of this planet, used like raw material. And the Lord's got a design, so repent. And like Johnny Cash, walk the line. God's commands are fight for all, no matter what color, creed, or breed. Whether slave or free, Jew or Gentiles, good boys, even juveniles. Walk of the green mile, the blood of Jesus. Go out the other five, the one recorded by God himself. Cause he's a doctor, monitoring our spiritual health. And he sent the cure, pull me out the sewer. From a world so dark and obscure. The devil's a liar, still a killer and destroyer. But Jesus Christ is a riddler. Only bridge to the Father. There ain't no other. It doesn't matter what your color calls. The devil's a liar, still a killer and destroyer. But Jesus Christ is a riddler. Only bridge to the Father. There ain't no other. It doesn't matter what your color, yeah. The devil's a professional strategist, ravenous and will fail cause of arrogance with earth's holy inhabitants. Though many times I slid, went back to my sin like the Jews in Egypt. Now with the wilderness, I'm fighting fervently like other born again believers standing sturdy, serving the king of glory who alone is worthy. If you haven't heard, the victorious liberator, devouring all devil fakers, running a line between heaven and hell like the equator. Jesus said without me, you can't I do nothing Cause the forces of hell Were so unseen and cunning Just stop running Except Jesus is Lord And you'll be transformed A born again believer Righteously conformed With the Lord Who wore the crowns of thorns Commanding an angelic swarm The devil's a liar Still a killer and destroyer But Jesus Christ is a riddler Only bridge to the Father There ain't no other It doesn't matter what your color Yeah Cause the devil's a liar Still a killer and destroyer But Jesus Jesus Christ is a riddler, only bridge to the Father, there ain't no other, it doesn't matter what your color, yeah, cause the devil's a liar, cause the devil's a liar, that's all he is, Jesus said whoever sins is a slave to sin, freestyle, and that's how I bring it, the truth, and that's how I bring it, with the king of kings and that's how it is there's no other way to have it you can be forgiven delivered from the devil with nothing but a rebel a pebble he gets kicked by the almighty god and he's free i do it like this for the king the right hand of god is the son of god jesus christ reality 